Hi everyone, it just occurred to me that, you know, I should share this video for those who struggle a little bit with visualizing how to convert business problems to RPA solutions. I've done it for many years um, now, but even before I started with RPA, I was already someone who, you know, was always um, studying processing and look, uh, processes and looking for ways to improve them. So it comes naturally to me and it just dawned on me uh, as I was talking to my colleague, uh, trying to show him how things are done, that a lot of people don't have that uh, knowledge. So I, I thought I'd share this video to help you, you know, understand how you can visualize problems. Even when you visualize how to solve problems, even when you don't have complete information in your hands, you can still figure out a way to design and develop an RPA solution. So I hope you find this useful. Um, I will share the link to the video that has the complete or completed work in the narrative of this video. So you see the end result. Thanks. I hope you enjoy. Bye. But, but just so you know, you know, the, the, the idea is that, um, the idea is that you you have to solve you have to be able to solve problems for people. Problems, yes, I know. Mm -hmm. So that means you have to see things that you have to understand that okay, what is the problem? And after you understand the problem, you have to think of a way to teach a computer. To yeah, to solve it in summary, but you know, what the job of an RPA developer is is to teach a computer how to mimic a human being, you know, how to pretend like it's a human being and do what a human Madness, being would have yes. done. And then do what is there. Do what a human being would have done, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the first part of being able to do that is you have to be able to understand what does the human being even do? You have to be able to write, you have to be able to listen to the person explain that ah, this is what i normally do right and then you now convert those things into steps you know when i get to the office the first thing i do is i log into my computer after i log in i open excel after i open excel i, I go to the place where i store the students information you know when i get to that place i take the first student's name I prepare an invoice for the first student and then I print it out and I send it to the parents. You know, you have to understand what does the person yes. do. Yes. Only if you do that will you be able to, number one, understand what the problem is and then number two, you might even be able to say, ah, maybe the way you are doing it is not the most efficient way, we could try something else. You get and that's and that's kind of what i have done here i have decided that what they are doing may not be the fastest way to do it may not be the best way to do it but i also understand that these are the steps involved in getting this thing done are you with me i'm with you uh -huh. so what you are, i think the first part of your job is to understand the problem that you're trying to solve then the second part is whatever it is that job is it has to be interacting with the computer do you get it can't be you know you can't ask rpa to teach your student now and that's a, that's a physical thing you can't ask rpa to give a certain textbook to your student Right, but you can ask RPA to do things that a human being might normally have been doing on a computer. That's yes. all that's limited to. So you might find out, for example, that part of the accountant's job is printing a copy of the invoice and then um, sending it to the parent. All right. Uh, and, you know, for someone like you, that doesn't work well for you because. You are not a human being. You are not going to send something to the printer and then a human being picks it up and then gives it to the students to give to his parents. Right? Yes. 
that's you know that's probably one way the accountant does it i don't know if i'm uh correct no you are, you are. Mm -hmm. then the other way is she will send um an email to the parents as a result what i get which i'm going to like um i'm going to transfer to your computer now what I get after all is said and done. Oh, I've lost the connection. Oh, I'm still connected. Mm, but I've lost the connection. Okay. Oh, that's true. Maybe you're coming in again. Hmm. I don't think I'm recording anymore. It's something like this as a parent. Okay. I get this document. <laughs> And it was from that perspective that I designed the solution that I created. You will notice that, okay. number one, the name is even wrong for my son. But you notice that there's a place where she puts a name and then she might put the invoice here. Oh, these are the things we are paying for, right? This is the account. So every student gets something like this. So that tells me that she takes the time to type the person's name in here because this is always different. Yeah, and the class. And the class. And of course, if the class is different, it means the bill is a little bit different. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So she has to do this for everybody, which means if she has 100 students, she has to type the name inside here. And then the class for each of the 100%. So that presents something that the computer can mimic. Are you listening to me? I'm with you. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason why what I sent you has, number one, it has a list of students that we're assuming that these are the students in the school. How many students are in that school? Uh, we're about 50-something uh, now. 50-something. Uh, something. This list has just 30-something because it's, you know, 34 because it's hypothetical, right? But then it also has invoices. It has an invoice for grade one, which I imagine is different from the invoice for grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, grade 5, grade 6, right? Yes. So I'm trying to recreate what the accountant does. So we need one invoice for each class, right? I asked you all those questions yes, yes. back then. So I have them all here. Then what is left now, since class is taken care of, the student's name has to be inserted, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I, I purposely put student name Michael Jackson in all of them because I know that this Michael Jackson, there's no student name Michael Jackson, but every student is going to have a different invoice, right? Yes. So I put it there purposely because I want it, I want to highlight that this is something that I need to write, what, 50 times and send out 50 different invoices, right? Yes. And then lastly, this is the list of all the students. So, but the way I have done this, I've done many things together that I didn't, I didn't really, I just know how to do these things. But for someone like you, you have to think about it very properly before you can even design, how will I solve this problem? This thing that I have done here, it's just, I just have so many years of dealing with this kind of thing that it's just simple to me to figure out. But it might not be so simple for you to figure out. What I have done is I have put everything in one place so that my robot can get everything in it from one place and solve the problem. Yeah. And it will take it just a few minutes to solve the problem. What is it supposed to do as a robot? It's going to take person one, check the class. If it's in class one, it's going to send it. It's going to go into this place, type the person's name here, where I have Michael Jackson. And then it's going to remove this. A, an invoice, create an invoice for the person. Remove it from this workbook. Create a fresh one, and then look for the parent's email address, right? Yes. And then send the, an email address to the parents with that invoice created for Hamza to Susan, right? Yes. And if you like, you can put the father and mother's first name on the uh, there. Uh, there, Mildred and Chinray Hamza. If you like, you can do that too. In the same, in the same sweep. 
to create an invoice, then email it to the parents immediately. After it has finished that one, it will come next to Akinson Yatolani. Check the class. If it's in class two, it will go to grade two invoice. Write Tolani's name there. Remove or create a special invoice for, for Tolani by removing it from this book and creating a new Excel sheet, converting it, and then send an email to the parents too, whatever their email address is, right? Yes. And then it is continue doing that one by one by one until it gets to all of them. Doesn't matter whether you're in class one, class two, class three, to find the right invoice and put your name there and send it. Um, I can guarantee you that's a hundred times faster than what, what she's doing now. I can guarantee you. Because she has to like type the name, she has to remove it. And this thing that I'm telling you is gonna take the robot literally seconds to do. Sorry, I have to take the call now. Hold on. Okay. Someone's calling.